This is Kevin Michael Schmitz, and I'm a celebrity fashion advertising photographer. I uh, have been shooting campaigns this last year for Burberry, for Giorgio Armani, and I've also spent you know my entire career shooting large-scale six-figure ad campaigns, as well as um, editorials. I've published in over 200 magazine editorials, and I have... Um, a lot of knowledge that I want to share with you guys today. I'm going to kind of reveal some of the secret strategies to posing. And this is something that many photographers struggle with immensely. Uh, so many photographers that I talk to, they, um, you know, they might be able to be a great photographer and understand lighting techniques or even the camera techniques and the technical aspect. But when it comes to the nuances of posing models or talent or clients, whether it's, you know, you're shooting with models or uh, you're shooting with a portrait client or a wedding client, uh, whatever it is, or even celebrities, one of the most important things is going to be how you pose them. And this is something that uh, it's, it's not something that is essentially just trained or taught in school, you know, in photography, in university um, for uh, photographic classes. It's not something that most people even learn uh, online or on YouTube. It's kind of hard to find out this kind of information. So today I want to kind of go in depth about how to pose models, how to work with them, get the most out of the person you're photographing, the little nuances of how they move their face, how they move their body, and be able to master that. So when you're on set, and you're photographing something, you're photographing a person, how can I uh, create a scene that is not just a spectacular photograph, but something that's completely iconic? A photograph that's going to take it to the next level and create iconic images that are something that are going to stand the test of time. And a lot of that, of course, you know, it comes down to first starting off with the top model, so uh, one of the things that I always do is I also, I, when I'm casting, when I'm thinking about my photo shoot um, and I'm planning for it, whether it's a big ad campaign for a fashion client or a lifestyle client, or whether um, it's an editorial or, or even one of these epic photographic workshops that we direct, I'm always going to look for not only the level of um, the bone structure and a face and how light essentially um dances across the face at what kind of shadows that we get from somebody's nose from somebody's facial features because that's going to definitely come into play with how i'm going to pose them but also i'm going to be looking at can the person move can the person really give a great pose and sometimes models can't they're you know they might be beautiful people but they just kind of stand there they just kind of you know are black and I'm sure you guys have experienced that, you know, whether you're photographing, especially if you're photographing a portrait client and the person isn't used to or comfortable having their picture taken, and they're just kind of sitting there with an uncomfortable expression, and you have to coax something out of them, okay? I, I know that many of you guys have experienced that. Or if you're shooting a model, and you're trying to get something more, but they just have that one, that that magnum or that blue steel, where they're just looking straight, and they just have this like one look, and it's just boring. Okay, whether it's facial or whether it's their body and they don't know what to do. I also want to touch base on why many photographers struggle and they go a little too far with posing and they get kind of that like hardcore 80s posing where everybody's like striking a pose and being kind of ridiculous and silly and it doesn't have the nuance. It doesn't have the high tier level of quality and the sense of taste that what we're going for, for a really high-end fashion shoot, okay? So um, one of the things that, um, you know, when I'm looking and casting models, I'm going to look for, can the model move, right? What kind of expressions on their face are given? And what what can their legs do? What can their, um, you know, are they flexible? Can they move? Can they jump? Can they run? Can they can they kind of um, do a, a step or a skip? And I know that sounds like, you know, oh, well, everyone could do that, but that's not true. And oftentimes when I'm casting models, I'm being very, very selective about what the model, you know, choosing models that can actually do something and move. And, and it's not just me. I want to make this really clear. When I'm uh, working with a high-end client, the clients are also looking for this. Oftentimes, my clients, and I'll, I'll conduct castings because I live in LA. Um, right now, I'm broadcasting live from Australia um, because I, I'm here uh, shooting, and I'm actually about to fly to the Maldives this evening um, to be filming for my new TV show, Great Escapes, uh, for the new episodes of it. Um, but when I'm shooting um, a, a major fashion campaign or lifestyle campaign, I'm often doing castings in LA and New York. And in LA, 
you know, I'll, uh, I'll book out a casting studio. I'll, uh, I'll contact all the top model uh, modeling agencies in LA. So it's elite Wilhelmina, next vision, um, LA models. I'm going to look at Aston models, all the biggest modeling agencies in LA and we'll cast them like the top 15 agencies. And I'm going to make a prior selection before I meet them in person. And I'm going to be selecting them based on, of course, their face and their look and their height, you know, generally, you know, five, nine to five eleven. um, their, uh, their look, I'm looking for somebody with, you know, strong bone structure where light looks amazing on them, but also that they can move. And I want to see that they can move. And, and especially if I was photographing a lifestyle, a lifestyle scenario, because they really have to move. They have to be jumping and happy and really getting into the moment, right? So for instance, when I'm looking at this posing guide that I put together for you guys, um, there, there's a lot of great poses on here where it makes a studio scene look interesting. And when I'm, you know, and when I'm doing castings, oftentimes I may even make the model move in some of these poses and I'm going to be photographing and filming the models to then send over to the client. I give my recommendations and then the clients will then make their final selections based upon the selections that I choose. So, you know, say if I'm casting from 15 agencies, I've got, um, say, uh, 200 models to select from that they send me casting sheets for. I might invite the top 50 to come in in person. And then of those 50 that I'm photographing and filming, I will select my top maybe six descend of the client. This is pretty common. And then of those, the client can, you know, take their pick of those top six that I'm recommending. Um, and most of the time they go with my, my suggestions, but anyway, so I'm going to be selecting them based upon this. Now, these are some poses where I, even though I'm an, more of an in-studio guy and you guys, you know, many of you know me from all my, um, on location photography, um, and creating, you know, epic moments on location, especially at our massive scale photographic fashion productions and lifestyle productions, um, like, uh, at the photography workshop series and, you know, productions like this, where we're shooting with supermodels, by the way, these girls have been in the Versace campaign and the George Armani campaign, and we shot them at our New York fashion workshop. And we get really in depth with posing. But while we're photographing this scene right here that we're looking at, I am pulling out a posing guide, right? I'm pulling out a posing guide uh, that essentially I'm going to select my favorite poses from. So say I take a paper like this, I print it out. And then I'm like, okay, I literally turn this around and show the model. And I say, hey, this is the pose that I want to get from you. And then maybe make an adjustment, right? So, you know, similar to the step pose right here that you see on the right center. Um, but I want like a really strong power pose, keep the hands uh, kind of just striding down instead of them up like this. And I'm going to have them walking towards me, um, and, you know, or off to um, off to the side. Um, oftentimes too, um, I want to make sure that I'm trying to create a little bit of a ambiance or moment or movement into a sequence, right? So for something like this, I'm looking for a model that can really move. Now, if I'm shooting in studio, it's even more so because studios are in, 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 you know, innately boring. They're just white background. So there's nothing going on. And you know, if I'm going to shoot something in studio, I want to have something interesting, something that's going to draw somebody in and be you know, fascinated in, um, in what I'm photographing, right? So, um, you know, so for instance, uh, you know, if I'm creating a, um, a sequence where I'm shooting in studio, um, shooting some of these, uh, these scenes where the, the model's really going to like literally jump or step, or um, they're going to be flipping their hair, and then I've got fans blowing into their hair, or a scene, you know, a sequence like this, where the model's almost falling, right? So they're moving and falling and this image on the right, top right here, they're almost jumping and kind of almost falling at the same time and creating this sense of weightlessness. I love doing stuff like this. It's some of my absolute favorite types of poses. Or of course, if we're stepping and we're doing something like a step, I love, love giant steps. This is one of my favorite poses right in the center here. This is one where I'm I'm using the handbag uh, or some other prop as um as something of intrigue because my eye is going to be drawn right to it. But you notice the design, right? The design here where the model's legs kind of have this beautiful curve shape. And this is really important because a lot of photographers will make this mistake and maybe one of the legs will disappear behind the other and they almost look like they're missing a leg or an amputee. So I don't want that. I want to make sure that the models are going to be um, 
you know, really moving, but we feel like it's interesting, right? We feel like it's something that that actually works. It's not like we're shooting somebody missing a leg because that would obviously look really strange on, um, uh, you know, on camera. So definitely start thinking about um, when we're photographing, what kind of energy can we bring to the table, right? What can, what can we do maybe even differently? So I'm going to start off with something uh, that, you know, that seems really interesting and, you know, great pose to start with. So I'll have a posing guide there oftentimes. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to then modify it and adjust it. So that's not just, you know, a replication of what's been done before, but it's something that's fresh, something that's new, but in the vein of something that I think is really interesting and really impactful. And I think that that is uh, a really strong way to do things, right? Now, there is a, a lookbook shoot that I shot um, that I felt was, um, uh, you know, a real, and, and by the way, guys, if you guys uh, don't uh, all know what a lookbook is, essentially uh, designers every quarter, they come out with a lookbook for their and new lines. I think that that is uh, and, a really um, strong way to do Sorry, guys. Right? Um, no. So when we're bringing a um, uh, a client for a quarterly lookbook, so we're going to shoot like their fall line, their winter line, spring line, summer line, et cetera, um, we're going to then uh, shoot something like this. And like, for instance, this was a client that, um, you know, had paid me $30,000 for a one day shoot to do a lookbook for her. Um, and I put together um, some really dramatic lighting, but they were really trying to feature the jacket. And oftentimes, too, when we're posing, we need to show off the wardrobe because, of course, that's what we're selling is fashion, right? So if we're showing the fashion, we need to make sure that we're accentuating it and maybe the, the posing in a way that's going to make the fashion really pop, right? And this is in studios, so it's, you know, on white, it's, it, it's very boring, but we made it a little dramatic and moody with the lighting, making it a little gray and dark and black. And then the models lit really dramatically. And we're really showing off that the jacket can be worn in different ways. It can be really elegant. It can also have movement to it. And expressing that with the pose is really important. Also, one of the things that you guys are noticing too on a lot of the images that I'm showing you is that generally the models are not looking directly into camera. Okay. This is something uh, that's also, I think, um, one thing that I really want you guys to work on. Uh, now, if it's a portrait shoot, I understand. If you're photographing a portrait, essentially a portrait is about the person. So you are getting the, the person to look at a camera because you want to see their eyes and it's about them, right? But if you're shooting something where it's it's a mod, if you've got models involved in, in any way, and um and, and it's like say a, a fashion shoot, for instance, um, or even a lifestyle shoot, I almost always, almost always have the models looking out, looking in another direction. And what this does is it almost, it gives more of a sense of timelessness. It also uh, gives the models um, a sense that uh, this, this kind of wonder and this feeling in their eyes. And this is what I'm interested in. Whereas if they're looking into the camera, it's so much engagement that oftentimes it's more about the model as who they are rather than the fashion that we're trying to sell. Okay. And that's important because, you know, obviously that these models are, you know, sometimes are really amazing, incredible people to work with that I would love to, to show who they are. But the thing is the clients are looking for what the wardrobe is telling, what the story is telling. So in a scene like this, we just shot this at our New York fashion workshop. This was shot on location at a $40 million mansion estate in Greenwich, Connecticut at the New York fashion photography workshop that I directed in September following Fashion Week. And by the way, we have another one of those coming up this September where literally Fashion Week happens in New York. All the top supermodels come in from Milan and Paris and they're in town during Fashion Week. And then following Fashion Week, um, we are directing this mind-blowing high fashion workshop out at these epic um, mansion estates and we shoot in studio. So posing is really important. And this is a workshop where I always print out a posing guide to showcase to the models and to the other photographers there of like, what kind of pose can we get out of those models, out of the talent there? Really, really important, right? And of course, <laughs> on top of that, we have a dog in the scene. 
So shooting with an animal, we've got to also pose the animal. So getting somebody standing off to the side, posing the animal, making sure that they are looking in the right direction. And um, and by the way, this is a question. I'm looking at the Q&A right now. Some, um, somebody asked, is this a real dog? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a real poodle. But we had the poodle groomed perfectly for this. And we also had them trained so that they knew exactly what to do on set. And, and oftentimes, we are shooting with a lot of animals. Um, this year alone, we... Um, and, or I should say in the last two years, we've shot with Bactrian camels for a lifestyle shoot up in the mountains in Colorado. We've shot with alpacas at our Newport Beach lifestyle advertising workshop. We've shot with horses at literally almost every single workshop that we do. Um, we've shot with um, little Pomeranians. We've shot with poodles. We've shot with hawks, eagles, falcons, owls. Um, we've shot with um, baby lemurs. At our Virginia um, equestrian uh, workshop, we shot with baby lemurs as well as kangaroos. Um, it, it's been unbelievable the kind of animals we're shooting with. And we also have to pose the animals as well, because this is something that uh, becomes a big part of the scene. By the way, this is actually a um, the an aerial shot of that location we were shooting at at the New York workshop, the $40 million mansion, where they actually were telling us that they spent over a million dollars a year just on their um, landscaping, which is absolutely um, insane. So um, anyway, and, and by the way, guys, I'm talking about all these epic productions um, where uh, if you are interested in mastering um, your techniques and mastering your ability to pose models, um, we have a, um, a series of epic productions and workshops that we do this on. So I know this is a free webinar where I'm revealing some secrets and strategies of face nuances, body movement, posing guides, and all of that. Um, and But I also want to make something clear is that we also do some epic photographic workshops, including we have an incredible photographic workshop on um, posing, art direction, and storytelling. Um, and this is an incredible workshop where um, this is a six-hour intensive about uh, storytelling, art direction, and posing models. And if this is something that you guys are interested in attending, it's an incredible experience. Um, it's a, um, it's, and it's literally uh, a, an involvement where we go step by step how to pose the models, how to get the most out of the sequence over six solid hours so you can master your posing and how to storytell and art director sequences. And the cool thing about this, um, it's a $12.95. So it's only $12.95 to attend this workshop. Um, we are offering a $300 discount if you guys enroll today um, in this amazing workshop. If you guys want to see more information about it, um, we have, I just sent a link on the chat. Um, and this gives you all the details and information about this mind-blowing um, a workshop that is an incredible virtual workshop you guys can uh, take immediately. Um, and it also involves some posing guides as well. So this is an incredible experience. However, that being said, um, and by the way, all these models that you see here, I've literally booked every single one of these models um, for our photographic workshops um, over the last um, like year and a half. And we've worked with them in LA, New York, Las Vegas, Miami for these specific models that we're looking at right now. Um, so, um, and I believe um, three of three or no, four of them have been published in Vogue, um, which is pretty incredible. So, uh, of course, starting with top models like that, that, that actually can pose and create some amazing scenes um, really does make a difference, right? When you're working with a model like Valena, who's been in the cover of Harper's Bazaar, or she's been in Vogue, she's a world-class top model. When you're shooting the models like that, she kind of already understands how to pose. And now all we need to do is kind of give her the nuances, right? Because some of the things she's going to do are exactly what we want. Some of the things that she's going to do are a little too much. Um, but oftentimes when models this experience, I kind of let her just do her thing. So that's a whole nother way of approaching it is when you have certain models that are so ridiculous and over the top and such professionals, sometimes you do kind of need to let them um, kind of just do their thing and then you can coach them from there. Okay, so that's uh, some another strategy that I kind of incorporate into some of my, um, my posing with some of the models that are at the highest level um, because she has a level of confidence that is pretty unparalleled. And you can see her um, posing here with a horse, which by the way, Posing this horse is extremely challenging because the poor horse is getting, you know, annoyed. It wants to eat the grass. It's it's tired. It gets frustrated sitting there. We might even have wind blowing, like such as like fans blowing. 
uh, onto the horse to make the mane go. And um, now, you know, Valena, what you don't see is the behind the scenes. She's constantly pulling the horse down. She's holding its head um, behind and making sure that it's in the right movement. And then also oftentimes when you have a horse standing in one place um, and they're not going down to eat the food, eat the grass, um, they'll start to hoof sometimes, um, which I wanted to capture on camera, which we ended up capturing this amazing like hoofing sequence, uh, which looked incredible. But all the different nuances with the expression in Valena's face, if you look at how she's um, posing her legs, and there's like a little bit of a curve there, you can see the knee bend, a beautiful gold dress, and then most importantly, the way that she's adjusting her face. It's like she has a slight tilt with her chin, but she's looking slightly off, to, off camera, so she's not looking on camera, but even though her face is looking one direction, her eyes are looking another direction, kind of an inquisitive look which I love this pose. This is one of my absolute favorite poses. And it's something that really takes it to the next level. By the way, guys, if you guys have any burning questions, I would love to hear them. Um, I know we have a bunch of people already in the Q&A and um, this is a live webinar. So I do want to go over these live. Um, and if you do want me to even review your photography and your posing of your fashion photography, for instance, um, I or even lifestyle photography, I would be happy to review it live and give you guys a critique. I'm in front of our massive audience. Um, I think we're, we're having over 300 photographers live right now. Um, and I would love to um, uh, showcase uh, all of these, um, some of these critique ideas over what somebody is already doing with their posing. And then maybe we can start to go into what we can do to maybe improve on some of those poses. So if you guys are interested in the Q&A, um, please, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, or in the chat, uh, please put your website down. Uh, so that we can see your website. And um, if you want it to be reviewed, I'd be happy to do that live. Um, and um, I think that um, it would be really cool. I just enabled that in the chat. Um, so if you guys want to um, put your website down there, I'll be able to see it and I'll be able to um, review it live if you guys are chosen for that. Um, okay, so um, I also am going to bring on some uh, panelists today. Um, I have an amazing photographer named Adriana Escalante, who's an incredible fashion photographer um, that has worked with me now on, I believe, uh, two of our epic productions um, uh, that and created mind-blowing content with top models. Uh, with me, which has been absolutely fantastic. And we're going to talk about posing uh, with her as well. Um, so um, so uh, anyway, um, uh, we've got some great questions here. Um, and uh, yes, uh, if in got, by the way, guys, um, this record this webinar is live, but it will be in broad rebroadcast. So if you want to watch this afterwards and go in depth about certain posing techniques and strategies, you can feel free to um, to jump on and see it in rebroadcast. Um, and uh, I think that that's a, a great thing to do. Um, also, um, guys, if um, uh, if you want to see any more of these incredible live webinars um, that we have recorded, I think um, over 70 of these over the last couple of years, um, we uh, I, please make sure to click on the link I just sent in the chat um, to everyone that's um, essentially to watch the recordings of the last 70 epic webinars on all aspects of photography, from retouching to um, shooting with top supermodels, shooting with animals, photographing all over the world. We're filming. We have content where we're filming in the Maldives and at my French castle um, that I own. I own a 49-room um, French castle um, in Marseille en Cambrai, France, and um, we also are doing some epic fashion shoots, and I'm going to go over posing models in front of the castle as well today. Um, and um, anyway, so if you guys are interested in any of that information, we've got some incredible live webinars all in rebroadcast. You guys can watch totally free and go ahead and jump on that. Um, so uh, um, and and you can subscribe uh, to that YouTube channel because I recommend it because we come out with new awesome stuff for our subscribers all the time. Um, and by the way, I'm getting some really great um, websites you guys are sending in that I can see here um, uh, from different photographers. Uh, Patrick, um, we got Travis Keys, Patrick uh, Patton Photography, um, Daniel Hamilton, Wheaton Mahoney. Uh, we got all these uh, wonderful um, uh, photographers sharing with me uh, all their websites. So please uh, continue to send those to me, guys, and I will select um, kind of the top ones to uh, critique and um, and you know make sure your guys are okay with me critiquing your photography live. Um, and make sure that it is a valid website. I um I'm, I just looked up some of your websites and they're not even live. So um uh like uh, I think this one 
uh, 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 Daniel, I think your website's not working live. So just wanted to give you a heads up, the, the link that you sent me. Um, but uh, I would love to, um, uh, you know, please uh, give me some great websites that I can review. Um, and we can talk about some of your poses. Um, and what's working, maybe some of the ones that aren't working. Um, okay, so uh, and then we can talk about what we can do to improve that. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with one here. Um, this is uh, from a photographer, Renata Voci. Um, and uh, Renata, I don't know if you're an Italian photographer. It sounds Italian. Um, I'd love to know um, more about you, but um, this is fantastic. Um, this is one of the photographers live. I, I don't personally know Renata, um, but I'd love to review um, your your work. So it looks like you've got some um, some content in Mover Magazine. Um, and uh, you've got some, obviously, some in-studio posing. Um, this is great to see. I love it. Um, and uh, I want to just do a little critique here. So, you know, first of all, um, this uh, these uh, really dramatic poses here, um, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, I think this is a really nice dramatic pose that I really like from you, Renata. I think this really shows some um, a lot of bend in the model's body. I can really see the shape of them as they bend back. I really love this and uh, kicking the shoulder back. Um, and obviously, it's a great model. She's probably size double zero, and she can really work that outfit. So you're really showcasing her body shape in this scene. And I think that's a really strong way to do it. So I like that, um, Renata. It looks really great. And congratulations on getting that cover. Um, but some of these poses I like even more. Like this has a really nice dramatic feel. I love what you did here, especially where um, you got this little shoulder um, uh, flare that's coming off with uh, with the outfit, and then she's got the elbow kicked out. So this is another thing. Um, this is a good example, Renata, of you posing a model uh, that really um, accentuates her outfit. I think this is a really great way to accentuate it because you're creating this beautiful S curve of lines throughout the pose. It's not too over the top, but it really accentuates the outfit. So I really like that. This one's a little weird. So I don't really love this pose, Renata, because it's almost like she's trying to take her head off and put it to the side. And it just looks awkward and strange. And also, um, this center of her body uh, looks a bit wide because of, you know, she's got her arms up. So it innately looks like she's, you know, a size 12 instead of a size double zero. So that's something where a, a fashion brand would not be happy with something like this. It's probably why that one's not on the cover, right? That one looks a little strange. Um, this is another one that like a common pose that I see a lot of photographers do. I don't love this one either. Um, it's uh, in a couple of reasons. One is obviously that makes the model too tall. And uh, and, and the, the hands are literally above the top level of the um, the backdrop. And then you can see that. Now, of course, you can always retouch that out. But this happens always when you're photographing a model with their hands up this high. So I don't really love this. Um, and again, the outfit doesn't really accentuate on the body on something like this. And I, And also you cut off their feet. So, you know, so some of the framing and the, the posing is not as strong there. And then the same thing goes with this one. I mean, this one, of course, it's she's wearing this giant dress, which is a little out there. Um, I don't love the wardrobe choice on this, but also because um, it's so baggy. But if you're going to do something like this, I would pose it a lot differently. This whole like, you know, winding up the the um, and holding the arms above the head, it just kind of has an awkward awkwardness to it. I normally don't do that. Um, and then, um, you know, I like the bend in the knee. However, I kind of lose the other leg behind her. And then the outfit, it's making it look really, really baggy. So Renata, I, I think that that one could use some improvement. Um, and uh, but anyway, so you've got some really good variation here. Um, but Renata, I think that um, uh, we need to really improve on the level of quality of some of the talent here and also some of the nuances of the poses. You've got some really great stuff in the beginning, but the rest of the website kind of falls off. Um, so, oh, there's a, a, Adriana. Um, so I think that... Um, uh, Renata, um, I, I would strongly recommend that um, you get involved in one of these epic photographic fashion productions and shoot with some supermodels um, and um, and start winning some awards with us, for instance. Um, and by the way, guys, I'm getting all some all these announcements of new award winners. I, I just heard that Evan Siegel just won number four uh, photographer in the world award. He's attended numerous uh, he's attended like maybe, I don't know, eight of our epic photographic workshops. And over the last year, we um, this this is from um, this the past year, we won 107 photographic awards uh, in the One Island Awards, Lurzer's Archive, um, Color Awards, Communication Arts, International Photography Awards, um, uh, Tokyo International Photography Awards, all these different amazing awards. 
and we won over 107 awards um, just in the last year, including the top 10 fashion photographers in America. Seven out of 10 of them were from the photography workshop series, all directed, art directed, posed by me. So these are some of the posing tactics that I love, and this is what won awards. So this is a really good example of like, okay, well, what's working? What's working? You know, what's getting published? What's getting, you know, uh, landing opportunities and what's winning awards? These are great award-winning images. And the, the reason they're award-winning is the level of the production, the quality of the models, the quality of the epic fashion styling, because that's totally over the top, but also the posing. Look at the poses here. The poses are incredible. And the reason that the poses um, or the, the, the images are winning awards, it's because the pose is spot on, right? These are really dramatic poses that are not too over the top. They're not too ridiculous, but yet it has a sense of wonder. It has a sense of power, especially the female poses. If you notice, they're very powerful. The women look very powerful. I'm empowering the women to look strong and powerful, to own the scene and to wear these amazing dresses and to take it to the next level of the sequence. And there's also even um, uh, a scene that um, John Wooten had shot with a male model um, kind of jumping off to one side um, where he's in front of a 1940s um, a fighter plane. And we actually shot that at our Elite Masterclass. Um, so these were all, by the way, shot at a Las Vegas workshop, the Elite Masterclass, and um, the New York Fashion Photography Workshop. So um, really incredible. And by the way, guys, I, I, I put on a, um, a great poll about if you guys are interested in attending any of these epic photographic workshops, specifically the in-person experiences, um, I listed them all out. Um, we have some incredible ones in Newport Beach, which is on lifestyle advertising in February. Um, that one's been sold out, but I think we could squeeze one more photographer in that. So if you guys have an interest, um, shoot me a message on the chat if you guys want to take the last spot in the Newport Beach lifestyle advertising workshop. Um, we have the Las Vegas Fashion Workshop, which, by the way, um, I, I believe... Um, uh, uh, two, uh, no, sorry, three of these award-winning uh, photographs of, uh, were all shot in Las Vegas. Uh, ones by Evan Siegel, Michael Wylett, um, and uh, Joe Strath were all shot at the Las Vegas workshop. This was also shot there, um, the cover of um, Gloss Magazine um, by uh, one of our photographers, Joyce Strath, which is amazing. Um, so these are all uh, shot at the Las Vegas workshop. That's an incredible high fashion workshop coming up in March. Um, we also have the April Miami Beach uh, swim workshop, uh, which is an incredible experience where we're shooting with um, Sports Illustrated swimsuit models, Victoria's Secret models, models that have been in Playboy, um, the guest campaigns. And this is an incredible production uh, that we have coming up in Miami. And um, to give you an idea of posing on a different realm, this is posing swim. Okay. And I'm showing, going to show you guys some video here of, uh, of, of what we did in Miami. But also, if you notice the nuances, the poses, looking down, looking off, looking over the shoulder, looking up at the camera and playing with the hair. These are not poses that are too over the top. They're nuanced poses but yet sexy and really take it to the next level. You're holding a fern, looking off, looking into camera, then looking out, looking down, then looking up. All of these little moments I love. And then a little bit of smiles and energy for the little bit of that lifestyle sequence. I love some of these posing ideas that we did and incorporated at the Miami Beach Swim and Resort Lifestyle Photography Workshop. This is in April. We do it every year. It's one of the most popular workshops we ever do. And we shot this on location at a mansion in Key Largo. We also, this last year, we shot in um, Key Biscayne and also Miami Beach um, with the SLS Resort. So it's an amazing production and incredible posing. Um, and this is another example of some really great poses. And I, I'm sure when you video because I really like showing uh, video because you can watch the girls move in the video, right? You can watch the way that they look, they interact. This is a little bit more of a lifestyle sequence. So it's a little bit less of a sexy, a little bit more lifestyle, which is uh, a bit more um, on, you know, a way in which you would pose portraits um, and, um, uh, and also like a lifestyle commercial photography um, and shooting something where um, if you notice, you know, the models look at this, they're moving into camera. When you're shooting a lifestyle story, we're getting more of that movement, that energy, that action. And we're also getting stuff where the models are smiling, they're engaging, um, and they're looking down, they're looking out. And then most importantly for posing, making sure that they're all posing at the same time. This is something that a lot of my photographers struggle with is that they don't pose at the same time. 
meaning that like some of the models are like spot on and some of the models are off okay meaning that and, and when you do that of course the image is ruined you can't do anything with that guys you've got to have make sure that all the models like in fact we're shooting three four or five models sometimes i think we've even shot six models at our miami beach workshop in one scene um we've got to make sure all of them are rocking it at the same time by the way i'm going to share the results of that um a poll we just did and it looks like you guys are kind of all um interested in a lot of different workshops but Newport Beach Las Vegas and the New York Fashion Workshop look like the most popular of all of our amazing experiences but that's really fantastic to see I'm also going to be showcasing and sharing a few more polls with you guys um and um I am um, and you know for instance like if you guys are interested in any of these epic photographic experiences that we're doing let us know um because I would love to get you guys involved um and I'm putting a poll up of how likely you are to enroll in one of these amazing experiences so um and what you know and what I mean by that is like you know are you ready to go 10 being like yeah oh my god one of these workshops would really take my photography to the next level it would be an incredible experience I really grow I could become a better photographer um and the images that I photograph at that workshop are going to like literally be next level I mean that would be a really great opportunity for any photographer at any level honestly that's an incredible experience um you know or if you're you know just kind of you know half and half like hey maybe you know a five or something like that maybe maybe I'll do it maybe I won't that's okay too um but I'm, I'm very very interested in hearing what you guys all have to say um because we have a massive audience on today um this is honestly probably one of the largest webinars we've done in probably like a two years or something so I'm really uh excited about all of the amazing photographers that are on live right now um and uh talking about um posing so um now we talked a little bit about swim posing okay and swim is is uh is, is a lot of fun and it's something that um uh, I think is heavily overposed and oftentimes a lot of photographers they go a little too much with like the sexy posing I don't want to go too far because if you're looking at even like Victoria's Secret and you're looking at um you know Sports Illustrated and you're looking at like um you know a lot of high-end swim brands like one of my favorite swim brands is Venus for instance Venus swimwear they're amazing they even had for years they had a Sports Illustrated swim line um oftentimes um they are not too over the top either they're not too sexy they're not too um you know uh like um wild they're doing things that are a little bit more um nuanced and um and classy upscale and I really love that I think that um that's something in a way that uh I really like to see is just a little bit more nuance in the swim photography um and and that's something that um you know I'm really proud of the incredible content that we've been shooting at uh, these amazing workshops because what we're doing is we're creating stuff that's really good taste I'm looking for good taste that's what I want um and you know and for instance um uh here I'm gonna showcase a little bit this is a you know sexy model sexy bikini but it's still in good taste as far as some of the poses and this is shot in slow-mo so you can kind of see how they're posing the little nuances and movement of what they're doing um and this model we're coaching her but she's also doing a lot of these things on her own but I'm guiding which direction her eyes are going and of course in fashion we're generally not looking into camera looking off camera in swim oftentimes I am looking into camera I want the models to give some engagement and some energy into camera um so you know and, and also being happy being playful being fun if you look at Victoria's Secret um you know you look at Sports Illustrated there's a lot of playfulness and fun and energy to the scene so I want to create that um I also love scenes like this where they're literally like walking towards camera right and I'm I'm capturing content as they're moving and I can do this photographically or with video um or something like this where you know they're standing there but we're getting all the different nuances of the way she's tossing her hair the movement that she's doing and by the way we're lighting this with an eight by eight foot giant bounce which allows you to get a lot of different poses whereas if you're strobe using strobes you have to capture it it's, it's you know you're popping the strobe each time each each set you know each pop is going to be a different capture of a different pose what I like here is that it's continuous so you have continuous light and you can just literally just pound you, know, you can shoot 16 frames a second and just really pound the shutter and get as many scenes uh, as many uh shots as possible in um that scene so um now that being said one of the things I did want to point out when you're doing poses is even if like I'm shooting you know 500 pictures of this pose right here right and I'm shooting this I'm you know 16 frames a second and I'm just you know firing the shutter and getting all these amazing shots 
That's great and all, but remember when you're publishing the images in a magazine, or even if it's going for a fashion campaign or swim campaign, they're only going to use one shot, one, one, one shot per scene, right? So only one pose is going to make it into the editorial. Only one pose from that outfit change, what she's wearing with the green bikini, is going to make it um, for that swim brand. So remember that. So only one is going to make it. So you don't need, you know, three or five or 10 uh, shots from the same um, outfit. You only need one. So by the way, that's that's really, really important to realize. A lot of photographers make the mistake of having way too many shots from the same um, uh, pose in their portfolio. Yeah, that's something to definitely be aware of. Okay, now um, this uh, incredible um, uh, day in Miami, there's a shot in Key Biscayne. Um, you can kind of, kind of see a little behind the scenes. That's Priscilla Evans, um, our co uh, production coordinator um, and um, a top photographic consultant. So um, also guys, if you guys are interested in maximizing, learning more about posing, art direction, storytelling, if you want to maybe even, even unrelated to the creative side and you want to really jumpstart and maximize uh, your photographic um, uh, business and momentum session, really get your momentum session going so that you're kind of taking it to the next level in your photography. And you're just like, oh my gosh, like I, um, you know, I'm, I'm ready for 2023 to be the best year yet in my entire career. I am totally, I want to crush it this year. I am like, I'm ready to go. Then you know what? I encourage you and invite you to join us live um, and set up a one-on-one -on -one photographic momentum session with one of our um, expert photographic consultants, and we can get in-depth with you about, and this is one-on-one, -on -one, so this is totally free, and this is one-on-one -on -one just with you and one of our amazing photographic consultants, um, and it's just um, you and them one-on-one -on, -one on um, Zoom, and we can even go over your images, we can review your poses, we can review your um, strategy, your business strategy, so it's whether it's business strategy or if you want to go over poses, creative, and critiquing your images, um, click on the link in the chat and set up your own one-on-one -on -one photographic Zoom strategy session, um, and we can do a full image and posing review of your work. Um, so if you guys like this or you like what we're doing here live, um, I love um, to see it. All right. Um, and by the way, I, I, um, I also want to answer your, your great questions. You have a bunch of questions in the Q&A before I bring on our amazing panelists. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Derek Colasso said, how can I have a model pose barefoot? Well, hey, here you go. This is a model posing barefoot. Um, this is one um, where um, this, this top model, she's unbelievable. She's one of the top swim models down in Miami Beach, and she's posing barefoot this entire time. Um, I mean, I love shooting models barefoot because they don't have to worry about the shoes. Oftentimes when I'm shooting a big fashion shoe and it's a big over the top, ridiculous high fashion shoe, well, you know, that's great and all, but if the shoes are $5,000 shoes or whatever from Louis Vuitton or Versace or something, I have to be careful not to wreck them. And we run into this like at our New York fashion workshop. So sometimes the models have to be more um, standing in one place because we don't ever ruin those, you know, uh, those ridiculous expensive shoes. So I love going barefoot and especially it works with swim as well as the lifestyle photography, not so much for fashion, but for swim and lifestyle, I most of the time do have them barefoot um, because they can move better. I think it looks more natural, more lifestyle more fun, and it isn't so dramatic. I also don't really like um, swim models wearing heels. It just kind of looks too much, too over the top, too ridiculous. It doesn't have the right, um, it's a little bit trying too hard. And we got to be really careful for that. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, Desiree uh, Rice, as will link be posted or emailed for this workshop? Um, absolutely, we'll send you um, all the details. Actually, just put it in the chat, and you can um, you can it's in the chat. You can actually take a, a click on that, and you can go on and enroll um, on our website um, uh, and um, uh, and get involved in the uh, posing for photographers. Uh, workshop and you can sign up with the um, uh, with one of those or you can jump on and um, uh, let us know if you want to enroll we can get you enrolled today and give you a $300 discount if you message back saying you are ready to enroll um, you can message us on the chat um, and um, okay and uh, excellent so thank you so much for your great questions guys um, Stephen Paul says, um, I want to attend the Newport one. Um, that sounds awesome. And I'm glad you mentioned that Stephen, because that's something we're going to go into next is how to do high-end lifestyle posing, which is the hardest of all guys. I mean, fashion posing, honestly, with a posing guide, it's not that hard to do. You just have to have the top model. You have to have great lighting. You have to have great wardrobe and you've got to be able to coach the models and show them the posing guide. 
lifestyle posing is a whole different beast okay it's you're shooting with two three four five even six models and it's a lot more complicated and it's something why we're the only high-end lifestyle photography workshop in the world that offers workshops and that's something that uh that's why we're so sought after is because we're so niche with that and our high-end commercial lifestyle workshop Stephen and I'll showcase that and go in depth in that next um and uh Sean Trace um also asked will this be recorded and sent to us absolutely it will be recorded it'll also be on our YouTube channel um in the uh the link that we sent also on the chat um go ahead and subscribe to that it'll be live within about 30 minutes of um this concluding and you can watch it as well okay um so uh okay another excellent question from an anonymous attendee says um is that the 30k in reference is she's referring to thirty thousand dollars in reference to your creative fee or are you producing the shoot and that is used for payment for production as well or is that the photographer take home excellent excellent question so in the case of the lookbook lookbooks are generally a little bit lower budget right they're not a commercial advertising campaign where a commercial advertising campaign it's anywhere from my jobs are usually a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars for the budget for a two or three day shoot um for a lookbook they're usually smaller budgets they're usually ranging from ten thousand to thirty thousand dollar budget for the whole thing um so this was a it was a thirty thousand dollar budget um for overall I think my take home of that was about maybe twenty thousand maybe ten thousand in production costs roughly you know I would say it's usually about sixty to seventy percent um as far as my um earnings on a shoot and then the remaining is going to be my production hard costs that's if it and that's if it's produced properly um is to that you know the extra cost the cost the hard cost meaning the model cost the styling cost the location cost etc cetera, etc cetera. so um anyway so this gives you an idea now I also um you know just to uh curtail a few on the um the swim another thing I love to do too is posing sequences like this and, and by the way we're shooting with 8k cinema cameras um because you're not only me photographing the greatest images of your lifetime but you're also filming the high-end content as well and you can showcase um this is some of the stuff where we shot um from you know showcasing the butt we're showcasing the body and we're doing from um some camera movements up to down down to up side to side and then follow sequences um and making sure that they're posed properly when doing this as well um but obviously this is all done in slow-mo just to give you some of the ideas of some really great swim poses uh but these are some really great questions guys um okay uh okay Gideon Heller asks how do you deal with humidity in outdoor shoots e.g in South Florida in the summer that's a great question now Gideon um one of the things is dress properly I would say a lot of photographers are not dressing accordingly they're out in the hot sun here in Miami and they're wearing you know long pants they're wearing long shirts they're you know dressing too warm um don't do that just dress I I like to dress comfortably I'll dress in you know shorts a, you know a, a maybe a, a shirt like I'm wearing right now where it's like a um you know collared shirt that's got uh short sleeves um and then just make sure that you're constantly going in and and cooling down in the RV that we have on production which you can't see it, it's right behind where we'd be shooting here um and it's got air conditioning going on full blast the only challenge Gideon is going to be the equipment so in this case um photographically you're fine but if you're filming video which we are here with an 8k camera shooting with the Canon R5 on a gimbal um the camera overheats the Canon R5 does um so it overheats very often now I've had my R5s modified um there's a way that um uh you can have them modified um that um uh, you send them in to Kalara and they'll like literally modify the camera put a heat sink in it so that it won't overheat as much but humidity is weirdly enough what overheats it not the heat so I could be sitting out in the desert in 100 degree heat in Death Valley it doesn't overheat I could be in you know 75 degree temperature in Miami Beach but it's 90 percent humidity and it will overheat so just be uh and mindful of that and there's not a whole I can do to counteract it other than to have a backup so I'll have two Canon R R5s um on gimbals you know one if it overheats we um we uh uh bring the other camera in put it on the gimbal and, and start filming with that so that happens pretty often these are excellent questions though um okay so uh that gives you a little bit of idea of some posing some of the swim models uh, <clears throat> and by the way guys if you have any other swim portfolios you want to showcase um that's another thing that we can uh talk about as well okay now um uh I'd love to bring on the great and I get into some of your guys's websites in a little bit but I do want to bring in our amazing panelist Adriana Escalante um she's an incredible uh photographer Adriana if you want to um uh turn your video on um and uh, audio on I'd love to chat with you personally and bring the great Adriana Escalante on 
um, and we can talk about her and all of her incredible um, photography and her experience um, with posing. Um, so uh, Adriana, let me know when you are ready to go. Oh, I, I am. Can you hear me? There she is. Oh my God, so good to see you, Adriana. <laughs> Wonderful nice to see you to see you. too. And Adriana, is it okay if I pull up Adriana? Um, uh, it's Adriana E Photography. Is that your main website right now? Yes. It's okay. Fine. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to pull this up. And then uh, what, what we're going to do is, um, Adriana, first of all, um, welcome. And, and where are you from, by the way? Uh, I was born in uh, per Lima, Peru. Mm -hmm. And but I grew up in many countries in in the Americas. And then I also studied in France and ended up wow. in the U.S. Wow. Well, what a classy, sophisticated, cosmopolitan <laughs> woman. Um, well, I have had the honor of working with you personally. I believe you came to uh, which experiences with me? I did the Virginia question. Well, it, that time wasn't called the question yet. It was uh, yep, the Washington D.C. Virginia workshop. The, yep. Yes, yep. and then the the one in New York this past September. Fabulous! So you've been to two workshops already. That's awesome, Adriana. Um, yeah. And do uh, you feel like you've learned a bit about posing models from the workshops? Tell me about that. Oh, definitely, I have. Uh, I think the one in Virginia was like. Um, very challenging uh, for the same fact that you were mentioning that uh, posing multiple models at the same time mm -hmm. and they're always in movement. It's not like in studio that even though you were mentioning you have the, the you could you have you can have one or two, but they they kind of for the most part are they step in a pose and they try to, you know, hold it or just go into another one. But with lifestyle, they're constantly moving. And to compose a photo where the model is constantly moving and multiple models at the same time, I thought it was my biggest challenge and so much worth it to go to that um, workshop because I don't think I would have had that. I mean, I don't think I would have had that experience elsewhere. Fabulous. Well, I'm really glad you came because I mean, you're already a world-class photographer, but look at this image. It's the first image on her front page of her website, top model. Um, we shot this at the Virginia workshop and this, the nuance here with the posing is beautiful, Adriana. I just want to make Thank a comment you. about that. Um, obviously the girl's face is incredible. She's a top model. We flew in from Miami. And by the way, we do these workshops all over the world from uh, LA, Newport beach to Las Vegas, to Miami, Chicago, um, the Virginia workshop, which is uh, outskirts of DC to New York. Um, to my castle in France, but um, but if the models are not, you know, if there's an area like DC in Virginia, there aren't top models there. So what we did is we flew them in. So we actually flew in top models from Miami and LA, um, and Adriana had the opportunity to work with top talent that um, she wouldn't get access to otherwise, like, you know, in that area. So um, it was really cool uh, to um, to bring in these top models because they really were working it. Now, this is a younger model who is a really top model that we flew in from Miami, um, but we really coached her into giving some really great expressions. Now, you know, what was it like working with this model? Did you remember, I mean, how, what that experience was like? Yeah, um, she's Arizona Rose, I think she's. Yes, name. yep, exactly. She, yeah, I loved her. She's very sweet, very, um, all the models that um, Kevin brings to to these uh, workshops are so nice girls. I mean, they're very patient. They are like very accommodating and they, you can like, work with them for a long time and they feel I feel that they don't get tired but they they do but um they just they're great to work with and they're very receptive and they really welcome your feedback and uh, I think you also learn a lot from them um but they, they you know models need feedback also from the photographer like you know this is great you continue doing that or just switch your hand like this way, this other way. Uh, I mean, the photographer has a big role in direct imposing for sure. Absolutely. And, and, you know, Adriana, one thing I love about your photography is, you know, you're a great photographer, but you also, you have like, you, you kind of have a nice taste to the way you're posing, you know, and um, I, uh, I know, you know, you have a few images from the workshop, but you also have some of the other images too. Um, I'd like to see the New York images up there because the New York uh -huh. images are amazing. Um, but, uh, but also some of these other poses I did want to mention. I really 
really like this one. Uh, this is from, the, you didn't shoot this at the workshop, but I do love this shot. Um, and it just has like a really beautiful sense of wonder. Um, it's got like the models kind of looking off to the side. You've got this really beautiful um, uh, lighting where it just kind of lights the half of her face. Um, but it, it's not too far. It's not too dramatic. It just kind of gives me a sense of intrigue, you know. Um, and it, tell me a little bit about kind of some of your thinking behind this pose. Well, I mean, to be honest, in this pose, what I the first when I saw the light is all natural lighting, which is. Uh, to my amazement, I, I just can't believe I pulled that this shot through. <laughs> I mean, I it's like, <laughs> yeah. because I'm more of a, 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 a studio photographer, right? Totally. So, um, and working in your workshops, that was also one of my learning curve to, to do more fashion in natural light. It was like incredible. So here is when I saw the chiaroscuro right of the air of the place i thought oh my god if i can place the model where her face is really in the light but the rest of the body it's not so much um so this is basically you know um and the light was below was low so that's why she's she's down <laughs> because up there was no light there was nothing coming through the window it was just below so i have to place her below so you know, to take advantage of that beaming of light that was coming through the window. But this was in a hotel. That's where she was staying. It's a model from Miami. And um, so she called me up and said, you know, I want to shoot with you. I've seen your photos. And so we did. Yeah. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. I love it. I love it. Well, I just, it has a real sense of wonder and nuance that I'm, I'm really drawn to. Um, and as far as the experience, you know, when you came to this amazing workshop um, in um, New York, it kind of took it up a whole nother level, right? Because we're working with top New York models, um, completely over the top, completely, um, you know, uh, at the highest level of, you know, kind of fashion models and stuff. Tell us a little bit about that, about the experience of what you, um, what you did in the New York workshop, because it was very different. It was more fashion oriented rather than lifestyle oriented. Uh, yeah, it was very high fashion. It was very sophisticated. Um, the venues or the places where we shot, we got to shoot were absolutely right. amazing. Uh, this girl was just like, I don't know, she, she looked like computer made. Um, it was, she was perfect, perfect from head to toe. Um, she was beautiful to photograph. The, the styling was amazing. And I remember the shoes that you were talking about that, you know, when they're wearing like um, high-end shoes or luxury shoes, the stylists are responsible for what they're wearing. So they're always policing that we're not like messing up the wardrobe or messing up the shoes so that is that is challenging like in this garden for example and she was this stilettos by I think it was Louis Vuitton I don't remember the boots were amazing fabulous um, yeah, yeah, they, were, they were Louis Vuitton and they were like you know five thousand dollar seven thousand dollar you know shoes or something ridiculous um and they were um you know and i think a certain edition or whatever so we had to be really careful so what adriana is talking about is it's not just about posing the model to look right it's also posing within the parameters of the wardrobe so if you're working with this level of wardrobe and by the way this wardrobe was pulled by a vogue stylist and the wardrobe that she pulled was pulled for vogue so, but she was working on our production and another Vogue production. So she brought the wardrobe for this major shoot. So this is the, the level of quality and production that we're talking about here, guys. So if you do want to get involved in any of these epic workshops, we take it to the highest level. I mean, it's it's something where you do need to invest in your photographic portfolio and Adriana, you're genius because you're already a great photographer, but investing in your portfolio is the best investment you can ever make because you're developing and building your brand and what you shot here here in New York with me, as well as what you shot in Virginia, really catapults your brand to the next level. And I'm really proud of what you're able to create because now, Adriana, you are kind of can swim with the big fish. You can compete at the highest level. And this is something that she's really smart. She kind of took that next step. Um, and I'm really excited for you, Adriana, because now, you know, what's coming up next, you've already started to master some of these posing strategies. You've worked with some of these top models. I mean, look at this content. This is unbelievable. I know. It's beautiful. 
It's and so this was all shot on location at a $40 million um, mansion in Greenwich, right outside of New York. Um, and we also shot at uh, the Vanderbilt estate in New York, as well as in studio. So, I mean, it was completely next level. Um, so I'm really proud of you, Adriana, and I'm really excited. And thank you so much for sharing that insight. Um, can you give any maybe uh, last strategies or tips to our audience about um, posing and what you've kind of learned or certain things that they could incorporate into their own photographic um, careers? Sure. I think if for, you know, if, if you're obviously models, know uh, for the most part know how to pose but there are some and usually I think the the models that know it very well are those that have very good body awareness and facial awareness and you can tell one model from another based on that awareness and because when you give them instruction if they're like they don't follow it um, well you you can tell okay she's not getting it and a a model that has good body awareness, and many have uh, have been ex dancers or or done something in their previous life that have allowed taught them how to have that awareness. But if if they don't have it, then I feel that it falls upon the photographer to direct them more. And uh, but it is um, in but I think that also photographers. We need to give like precise instructions uh, on how to do it when you see that the model is weak um, at posing. Absolutely. And thank you, Adriana. That's some really, really good insight. Um, you know, both situations, one where you have a model that is strong at posing, like the model we're looking at now. And then what do you do when the model is weak at posing? Um, and, and Adriana, some of my guidance on that is um, if the model is weak, and you're shooting with a group, like say you have more than one model and it's say it's a lifestyle scene, um, which we're going to get into next. So guys, make sure to stay on because the lifestyle is what we're going to get into next. Um, I like to bring on a strong model as the like essentially the um, primary and have them model with the weaker model so that they can kind of bring up the weaker model. So that's what I did. And I don't know if you noticed that, but I did that a lot in actually in, in Virginia, they were all pretty darn strong, but the, the strongest models, like if you remember Hannah Danley and some of the, the girls that could really bounce and move, I brought them in as kind of the, the primaries to kind of get the other girls going. Um, so that way the strongest model kind of um, teaches almost the, the, the weaker model and they kind of both pose better together. Um, so that's one strategy. If it's a single model, now it's a little bit more challenging because it's just you and them. Um, but generally coaching them, giving them more guidance because the model just wants to look good, right? They all, they just want to look beautiful for the camera. And if they feel nervous or insecure, they're not going to look as beautiful for the camera, right? So Adriana, the best way to do it is to, you know, essentially make them feel super comfortable, make them feel beautiful, and comfortable, but also give them lots of guidance. And I think sometimes photographers don't give them enough guidance. They just kind of let the model do whatever. But the models, from the model's perspective, and by the way, guys, I mean, I started my career as a fashion model. So I, I understand both sides of the camera. Um, when you're starting from the model's perspective, you're, you don't know what the photographer is getting always. So like you kind of want to just give them as much as you can. But if they're not coaching you, you don't know if it's looking good or not. So I think giving them feedback is really valuable. Um, and if they are a little bit more insecure or newer, if you can give them guidance, and even if they are a top model, like these girls that we shot in New York, I mean, these are A-list models um, from the biggest agencies, from Elite, from Wilhelmina, from Next, from Ford, from all the biggest agencies, I'm coaching them, even though they, they've already been in Harper's Bazaar and they already, they already top models, but I'm still coaching them so they know what to do. And, and Adriana, I would even, um, you know, even models that are very high level, Still, the more the more you coach them and guide them, and the more um, guidance you give them, the more they respect you, and the more yeah. they're going to give you. So, uh, you know, you don't want to overdo it. Some photographers overdo it, and they try to move every little detail of their face or whatever. But I like to just kind of get them in a feeling and a move, and then give them a movement or an action like this girl's doing right here, and then I have her do that action until we get it right. But I, I'm, and the reason I'm showing you guys video over photographs is that this kind of shows you in slow motion how the models are posing. That way you can kind of understand how to capture it the way Adriana did. So, um, and by the way, this, all this amazing video content, the photographers attending are shooting this content. So this is all done by attendees. 
um, and photographers that want to get involved and, and not only photograph it, but have this amazing content for their video reel. In fact, Adriana, this is in the Dropbox. So I recommend you put this video on the cover of your website because this oh, video would really wow and dazzle the audience. You put this oh on the front God. page as like a splash page that you're going to be uh, drawing in a lot of attention um, from clients. So, um, but it's because it's really beautiful, beautiful work. It's but beautiful. thank you so much, Adriana. I can't wait to see what the next epic production that we have coming up. I'd love to have you uh, get involved at you know Las Vegas um, or uh, Miami or New York or Chicago. Um, and I just continue on this journey because you've done you've you've created epic content and lifestyle. You've created incredible content and fashion. Now we got to you know go and build a full forty image cohesive body of work in each fashion and lifestyle. Great. Thank you. Thank you Absolutely. for having me. It was great. Oh, it was such a pleasure, Adriana. And keep up the incredible content. I'm really proud of you and how good, how great you're doing at posing. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. Um, so that you guys got to hear from, you know, a, a photographer that I've also personally had a chance to work with, which is really cool and such an honor. Um, and, um, and by the way, uh, please ask more questions on here. I love the chat and um, sharing me as much, uh, sharing with me as much um, uh, questions as possible and also websites if you want me to review them. Um, and if we don't get a chance to review them, we can review it live one-on-one -on -one with one of our top photographic consultants um, that can have a one-on-one -on -one session with you, which I also recommend because it's a great way to really get um, some personal um, suggestions, guidance, and feedback. I think that's really fantastic. Um, so uh, excellent. So I love it. Um, thank you so much. Um, and uh, you guys have some really great um, questions on here. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, and uh, okay, we just have a few questions. Um, Odin Hashi asks um, adventure apparel brand shoot for e commerce brands. Um, so if you are shooting e com, it's um, posing is going to be very important because e com is basically when you're shooting e commerce, it's basically a lookbook, right? Um, it's going to be, you know, a model usually on a white background, you're going to be shooting them in all these different poses, and then in different outfits, and then they churn through and they, you know, you might shoot, you know, 50 or 75 or 100, you know, looks and you're just going through shot after shot. And having the right pose can really bring those e-commerce shots to life. So definitely use a posing guide um, to really bring some of that content to life and get people really, really um, get the models really going and excited on set. Um, so um, anyway, I also have some great comments here in the chat um, in the Q&A. Travis Thomas says, I've never seen a workshop of this caliber or talent. Very, very impressive, M &M, and I'm an Adobe content creator, Sony advocate and chairman of American Photographic Artists. If I could figure out a way to swing funds, I would attend in a second. Well, Travis, I'd love and be honored to have you, um, I, I um, especially a photographer with your stature. That's very impressive. Um, and all your notoriety, and I'd also love for you to share all of this with your audience, um, with American Photographic Artists. Um, and um, with uh, with Sony and Adobe as well. I'm sure we could collaborate on something. That'd be fantastic, Travis. Um, and if there is a way you can attend in person, I think it would really um, uh, take you to an even higher echelon of your success. And I'm sure, you know, Adobe and Sony would also love that. Uh, Sony was my sponsor for a long time, um, especially with my television shows, because I'm the TV director, host and producer of the TV show, Great Escapes that airs on CBS. Um, and in fact, I'm flying tonight, literally tonight, uh, to the Maldives. I have a 10 o'clock flight here from Sydney, Australia to um, uh, to uh, the Maldives, flying through Qatar. Um, and I'll be filming in the Maldives for about three weeks, um, filming some epic new content for um, my uh, TV travel show, Great Escapes. Um, if you guys are not familiar with that, I can, I'll can i show you guys um, a little, um, some amazing clips of this. And by the way, this is something that I also, if you're filming video, you have to be able to pose, right? Because video also incorporates, especially for travel, a lot of um, uh, amazing B-roll, which is the content where we're not speaking. It's the content of uh, the host and the co-host, which is myself um, and the co-host, and content where we're moving, swimming with sharks or whatever we're doing, making sure that that, um, that B-roll looks amazing. And it's a lot of posing 
art direction. Um, so we do it just not only still in photography wise, but also for video uh, when I'm filming this or also have a new show for Bravo that I'm filming at my 49 room castle in France. So that's something if you do also, if you have an interest in um, video, we'd love to see that as well. And by the way, guys, um, I, I know you probably all can't see the chat and the um, uh, the Q and A, or you may not be able to see all of it. Um, but I'm getting you know hundreds of messages. I really love to see this. Um, and thank you so much, Alan. Um, uh, he's he's saying this is a great class. Thank you so much. Uh, what kind of rates do some of the models get? That's a great question. So the kind of models we work with with Elite Vision, Ford, Wilhelmina, Next, IMG. Um, if it's a big campaign, um, oftentimes. They might be making anywhere from um, on the low end, like four thousand a day, up to um, twenty thousand a day, um, and that's uh, and that's plus agency commissions. So it would be plus twenty percent. Um, so it would be say it's you know um, five thousand plus twenty percent per day would be a common rate. Um, and also the rates keep going up. The rates have gone up more um, uh, because of uh, inflation and everything like that. So uh, modeling agencies are asking for more and more. And that's another reason that, you know, it's expensive to put on these shoots. It's really expensive. So if you have, you know, you're, for instance, at one of our workshops, um, if we're shooting, say, uh, three models on the first day, um, we're shooting, um, you know, essentially five models on day two, three, four, and five. So essentially that's 23 days of model bookings, right? That's 23 days because five for four days um, plus uh, another three on the day one. So you're looking at um, 23 shoot days. Imagine how expensive that is, right? You know, especially if you're getting a, you know, their typical day rates of 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 a day, it adds up. You're, so just the models alone can be hundreds of thousands of dollars plus the production costs. You know, shooting at a $40 million mansion is not, you know, it's not easy to get. It's, it's not a cheap to get, you know, these, these kind of locations are completely next level. And it's something that um, is, uh, uh, is, is quite a challenge and just to pull permits and to get access. It's something that a lot of photographers never even dream of or have access to. Now I'm fortunate because I have built up my network over the years. I have relationships all over the United States, as well as around the world in Europe, um, in, um, in Asia and Australia, all over America. Um, and I have access to $40 million locations. I've got access to some of the best, you know, beach houses in Newport beach to, you know, epic estates and mansions to castles, to water studios, to the most ridiculous stuff out there, um, that we can really take it to the next level with your photographic journey, because having that amazing location can really help with, you know, incorporating great poses because a scene like this, we're shooting at these gardens that are almost like, um, you know, like Versailles level gardens. Um, and we're shooting with models that, um, uh, can really pose and get the wardrobe looking, you know, moving and getting into action, but in a scene where it works, you know, it's not just a boring, you know, uh, you know, backdrop. It's something that's really interesting. And I want to see more. I'm intrigued. I mean, and if you notice, that's kind of a theme when I've been talking about photographers, websites and stuff, we're talking about um, in th something that's engaging with a pose and intriguing uh, and not too out there, meaning not too ridiculous, but something that's going to draw you in and get you in interested in what we're seeing. Right. I think that that's really, really important um, is to just get people really interested and um, want to see more, right? I mean, that's what we're looking for is, um, you know, stuff that where we want to see more of, of uh, that photographer's work. Um, or if it's a brand, you know, more of that, um, that brand. So, um, okay, so I'd love to uh, review a few more websites and go over some poses. Um, and we can um, and we can talk about it live here. So um, I have a really great photographer here that his name is Michael Owen. Um, now uh, this is a photographer that um, he just sent me his website. Um, so Michael, um, hopefully you're on live and you can go over this together. Um, but uh, you look like you're a great photographer, um, an established photographer, a successful photographer. Um, I love to see um, I love to see this um, and uh, to go over your website personally. Um, to see some some great um, great photography. Now you have a lot of work on your website, so I like that you've got a lot of content. Um, I would almost get it. I'm almost going to say too much content um, because you got to be careful not to overdo it. Uh, but uh, I, so I would like to do like an image review and critique with you and one of my top photographic consultants. Um, please click on the link to set one up because you've got a lot of really strong work, but you also have some work that's not as strong as like this front cover shot. This front cover shot is beautiful. Um, the pose here 
is magnificent. I love the girl. I love the um, the feeling. I love the lighting. Um, the wardrobe's looking amazing. It's not too in your face, but yet it's dramatic. Um, you kind of have a nice, um, it, the way you retouched it in Photoshop, it kind of has like a nice like um, feeling to it. I, I really like it, but the pose it's it's engaging and and even though i normally don't like a model looking into camera this one works this one works and it's not too handsy even though she has her hand on her head i actually like it okay i think that's really strong um this is kind of nice looking over the shoulder kind of have just like a looking off to the sides these are you know there's some pretty looks you definitely have too many of the same model wearing the same outfit though so for instance just as a uh a suggestion i wouldn't have this black and white in this color image of the same scene with the same outfit with the same girl right next to each other. It's kind of um, redundant from a fashion brand, um, you know, from a client standpoint. Now, some of this stuff, I, I'm not so thrilled with Michael. Um, you know, the model looks looked like she's a good model. I mean, she's not a top model, but she's a good model. But what I don't like here is we're looking up her nose. This is a classic mistake of photographing from the wrong angle. Of, the, of a pose so she you know this pose might not look bad if we're like we're standing straight on and we're shooting directly into her face or maybe slightly above but when you're shooting a female model i don't like to shoot up at them because it makes them look more masculine and we're looking up her nose right so that's not the best uh pose for a scene like this um generally i wouldn't shoot from this direction um, I'm not going to shoot a woman from so low uh because it's too it's too masculine looking i might do that for a man um, to make him look more masculine. But for females, I like to shoot straight on. I still want them to be powerful. And I don't want them to, to look, you know, diminutive. I want them to look um, dominating and powerful. But when you're shooting so low, it doesn't really work. So in this sequence, I'm not loving it. Um, this one's kind of interesting. I kind of like this as far as the, um, the, the background and stuff. Um, the model herself, though, it's just it falls off. I, I think that this could have been done better. The wardrobe cho choice is not what I would have chosen. Um, I would have had maybe a more elaborate dress. Um, and she kind of it just kind of falls off. But I like the concept here. I think you could redo that and make it better. Um, this is really dramatic. I like these up close shots, um, especially if you're trying to sell the um, the the jewelry um, that this would be like selling the jewelry, selling what she's wearing, the rings and stuff like that. Um, the men are pretty engaging. Um, this is an example of a little bit letting a makeup artist have too much freedom. Um, be careful with that. Oftentimes I work with creative makeup artists, but if they go a little too far, like in this case on the eyes, I'm not loving it. The pose and the, and the ones on the, the, the left are a little bit boring. The one on the right, um, this, this one right here, this one's a little stronger, more engaging and interesting. This one's a little too dark. Way too many shots from the same scene, same outfit. Not loving that. Um, and then, uh, you know, this, uh, it's okay. Doesn't really wow and dazzle me. There's a lot of images on here. This definitely doesn't wow and dazzle me, this male model here. Um, not loving it. Um, not loving uh, the, the, the expression or the lighting. Um, so I, I would say that you've got um, a case of having some strong stuff and some weak stuff. This is stronger. See, to me, Michael, this has some intrigue. I'm interested in what's going on here. I love your really soft, you know, dramatic light where it's like it's, you know, there's there's some nice backlighting. You've got, um, uh, you know, coming in and, and striking across the, the camera left of her face and then it's lit from the top right um, and it's really soft and it's not over the top. I think you do a great job at that. Um, I love the pose. This is, has nuance to it. Really, really strong with the nuance. Um these uh, little blah, they don't really do it for me, you know, and this just looks like a model portfolio shot, which is boring. Um, that's another thing, guys. So if you're a photographer shooting model portfolios, that's not going to land you campaigns. They just won't book you. Like I shot for Burberry this last year. Burberry's not going to book me if my model, my book looks like a bunch of model portfolios. They're going to look at my, my content if it's substantial and iconic that's what's going to book me Burberry campaigns, right? And so, uh, you know, so if you're shooting like, and I'm, I'm going to give you an example so you kind of understand here. So if we're looking at this uh, image right here with um, uh, in the center here with her just, you know, wearing that shirt and looking straight or whatever, or if you look at something like this, this has a lot more drama to it. The pose is nuanced. Um, the model, the outfit is incredible. The production is over the top and ridiculous. This has another level of class 
and iconic imagery. I would encourage you to get more like this. So, so I would really encourage you, um, Michael Owen, to, to jump on and join us at, like, say, the Las Vegas experience or to join us in um, New York, Chicago, um, or the Masterclass or at the 49-room French Castle um, that I own as well, which is also an ama another amazing experience, which um, we, uh, um, and, and whether you're a fashion photographer or maybe even a wedding photographer um, and you want to, you know, or if you just like shooting, you know, great landscapes and stuff, that's awesome too. Uh, but the castle is incredible. It's something that it's, you know, no one else offers anything like this uh, because, uh, you know, I don't know any photographers personally who own a 49 room castle in France. Um, but it's something that, um, we are offering September 3rd through 8th. And it's a epic experience at a 49 room castle in France that I own. And it's something that, um, you get to stay at my castle and have an experience of a lifetime. Um, we have elite chefs. We have, um, a, a masseuse on premise, um, we have, um, we're going to be bringing in top models from uh, Milan and Paris. And this is a shoot that I did um, with, um, for like a bridal fashion shoot that I did um, because I also, uh, we use the castle for, um, I, I, I use it to book million dollar weddings as well. So um, this was something to market that. Um, but this gives you an idea of the 49 room castle um, and what you can accomplish here. But a pose like this, very highly art directed. Okay. I art directed this in a way where I'm shooting it with beautiful lighting, beautiful models, this German model, um, but I'm having her hold the bouquet, look into camera to engage, because this is more of a wedding slash portrait kind of, you know, shoot. And then she's holding the horses, but the horses aren't center frame. They're kind of off to the side, but it's really showcasing that castle. And it has all of those, all of those elements po put together in a really elegant pose. He's not go doing, going too dramatic and over the top. Um, this kind of gives you a little video showcase of what, um, you know, what kind of uh, some of the sequences actually look like. Um, I love doing stuff like this over the shoulder, tossing the hair, um, having scenes where there's movement and energy um, and creating moments where you're intrigued, you're interested, you're feeling it, you're, you're getting involved in what that person is experiencing. I absolutely love it. You know, um, or if it's, you know, a couple sequence, getting them to run, getting them to kiss, capturing that moment in time. If you're a wedding photographer to capture something that is elegant and it's going to stand the test of time, because after a wedding's over, the thing that's going to last forever is the photographs. The photographs will be there for the end of time and for that couple to enjoy for the rest of their lives. So if you're a wedding photographer, a portrait photographer, um, making sure that you're getting the most out of the person, really coaching them. And when I'm posing uh, a couple or a portrait, I'm trying to really get their personality out of it. And I want to create a story. And instead of branding yourself as just a boring portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, why not be a world-class fashion photographer that happens to shoot weddings? And that's how I'm branding this right here. This would be something that would be perfect for a world-class fashion photographer that just happens to shoot weddings. Because that will take you up a notch. Instead of booking a two thousand or four thousand or six thousand um, dollar per wedding shoot, you should be booking ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a wedding shoot. And there's no reason you shouldn't. You just need to be able to brand yourself as a world class fashion photographer, knows how to pose, has incredible content that you can work shoot with me. Whether it's a New York workshop, a lot of people attend um, that one. Uh, wedding photographers, um, or if you want to come to the French Castle, it'll take you to the next level. So this gives you an idea of what that experience is all about. So it's an incredible experience. Um, okay. Um, so uh, anyway, so I've got some really great uh, more questions I want to uh, touch on um, and uh, and go over. So um, we've got some really good stuff here. Um, and uh, I, I know I'm not gonna be able to get to all of your questions. Um, Tony uh, Philippic uh, asks me, um, are you shooting video uh, slash photo in raw and color grading mood setting and post great question so just so you know that video i just showed you at the castle completely shot in raw that hasn't really been adjusted much that was just a raw video that we shot out of camera and we haven't really color graded that one um and um but yes i'm going to be shooting with canon um and in fact i'm using my slr uh, well it's actually a um you know a mirrorless um but it's slr style camera it's not a big video production camera um it's just my 8k um, Canon R5 that I used to use to photograph as well. Um, and I show you how to do that at the workshops, how to photograph and film with your photographic camera. 
And I, yes, I'm shooting everything in raw. Um, and especially when I'm photographing, I photograph everything in highest resolution raw. So I think it shoots at what, 45 megapixels or something. Um, and I'm shooting everything in raw. And then of course, in um, I then bring it into bridge um, in um, uh, in Photoshop and then I, um, and, and camera raw to, um, uh, cam and, and open them in camera raw to make my adjustments. In fact, we go over that in detail in my retouching workshop uh, that we also hold as well. So if you guys are interested in um, another epic um, uh, workshop that's a virtual workshop. We have a master class in retouching, and this is an incredible workshop that um, I'll show you how to um, once you photograph in um, in raw, how to take it to the next level and make the images completely pop. In fact, I go over that iconic images that you see here, um, the one shot with a parachute. But as you can see, you know, I, yes, I make modifications in post, but the image on the right hand side. Um, is something where um, you can tell that this is actually the unretouched version on the right side, the retouch version on the left side. And honestly, it's pretty perfect right out of camera. But I'm just making slight adjustments to, you know, the nothing to the pose, nothing to the to the background or anything like that, just to the color. And I'm also cleaning up the dress, the wrinkles in the dress. And even the makeup and hair is so perfect, I don't even really need to adjust that. So it's mostly just adjusting some of the wrinkles in the dress because the, because of the wind blowing, we had like six giant production fans blowing in. So it made some wrinkles in the dress and then, um, and then making the color a bit more pure. So I'm making the reds more red, the whites more desaturated and white, the skin tones a little bit warmer, making slight adjustments there, but I'm shooting in raw and then making adjustments. You can see this multi-layered um, file. So just to answer your question, but that's a great question. Um, and thank you so much. Uh, for that. Um, hopefully this helps guys going into some of these um, methods of posing, kind of taking apart and critiquing some of your websites. I absolutely love that um, because it's a lot of fun. And I think it really benefits everyone else, including the photographer um, that uh, is on. So, and yes, um, I also, uh, Wheaton asked, do you have a posing guide to share? Yes, I do. I have a posing guide. Um, it's actually a great one. It's a Pinterest board. I love to share it um, with photographers because we use it on set. Um, and, and I encourage them to print it out and then use it on your photo shoots. So we use it and we print it out in person and we show the models in person so that they can um, uh, they can, uh, they can um, uh, emulate that. Uh, Derek Colazzo asks, how do I contact models to do photo shoots? Um, that's a great question, Derek. Um, so uh, the best way to do it is to contact modeling agencies, okay? So um, uh, now this is the challenge, this is the catch-22. If you don't have a world-class portfolio with epic award-winning images and images that have been published and shooting with models from Vogue and Vanity Fair and Harper's Bazaar, it's pretty darn hard to get those modeling agencies to pay attention to you. It just is, you know, because they're not going to be interested in some amateur photographer. Even if you have a budget, they're still not that interested. They want to make sure that you're a world-class photographer that they trust, right? Trust is key. Now, since I have been doing this my whole career, I have my bachelor's and my MFA to be a professor of photography, and I've been shooting as a fashion photographer my whole career, and I'm booking models for big campaigns and spending massive budgets on models and modeling agencies, I get to pick the creme de la creme to choose and select the best models in the world for my photo shoots and for the photographic workshops. And this is one of the big reasons the photographers attend our workshops is because they get access they're essentially, you're not just enrolling to learn how to pose better, art direct better, storytell, because that's what a lot of my photographers tell me is that's the reason they come back. We have a 95% re-enrollment rate is because they want to master the posing, the art direction, storytelling, and they get to work personally with me sitting next to them and guiding and posing the models and helping them get the most out of the scene. That's a big reason a lot of photographers take these workshops, but also um, you're getting access to my connections, my relationships, the best models in the world that I get to bring in and you get to photograph because that will take you to the next level, having the best models in the world. It is literally the creme de la creme. So I'm really, really excited um, to bring in top models uh, so that each and every one of you guys that attends can get the photograph, just like Adriana gets to photograph at a higher tier so that you can just knock the socks off of the clients. Because when you now go in and you contact Elite, the, um, Wilhelmina, Next, Vision, IMG, Ford, you can showcase your epic body of work, Adriana, because your work will wow the socks off of them and you'll be far more likely to book top models. Otherwise, the modeling agencies either won't talk to you or they're going to give you their crappy models or their new faces, their lower tier models that 
are not really going to help your portfolio anyways. I wouldn't suggest what a lot of advisors do is they book models that are their friends or book models that are their family or try to book models on Model Mayhem or whatever. It's a terrible way to go about it because those are all amateurs. You need to work with only the creme de la creme, the best of the best in the world. Otherwise, what's the point? And this goes for not just fashion photographers and lifestyle photographers. This also goes for photographers that are portrait and wedding photographers. Because listen, if you want to be a top photographer, why not have world-class models that, it, for instance, if you're shooting weddings, why not photograph with top models from Vogue in wedding dresses that will wow the socks off of your clients? Because I tell you what, if you can go into a client, a wedding client, and show that you've shot a top model that's been featured in Vogue or um, you know, or other major magazines, for instance, we did one at our New York workshop with um, uh, a, a top model named Ginger who's been in Vogue, and our photographer shot this in person at the workshop and got it published in Vintage New York City uh, Magazine. This photographer, Veronica, shot this because she's a wedding photographer and wanted to take her wedding photography to the next level. So what Veronica did is she photographed this with an outfit that we provided that looked more like a wedding dress. So it was a Vogue model in what looks like a wedding dress that so now she can brand herself as a top fashion photographer that happens to shoot weddings with this nuanced amazing high-end pose where the model is feeling ethereal it's almost like she's a she's dancing she's moving she's you know whipping the um the dress up in the air and she's stepping all at the same time so this pose is super strong love a pose like this and it got the cover of the magazine which is incredible and i love 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 to see it Okay. Um, so, uh, okay. Great question. I also, um, uh, another question from Gideon, um, uh, Gideon Heller asks, what are some of the current trends in fashion photography? And also do you, how do you see the future of fashion photography evolving? Well, first of all, um, the trends, I would say, uh, you gotta be careful of trends because, the current trends are not going to be what's happening a couple of years from now. Okay. So um, although we've had a lot of like the plus size models um, and a lot of more like, you know, um, uh, more normal looking models and people and stuff like that, um, that's not going to last forever. So be careful of that because what you're photographing now has got to be a body of work that's going to market you a year from now, two years from now, right? So uh, what I would recommend is go for some of the classics, create images like this that are iconic. This image, by the way, was shot like four years ago, but it's still iconic today. It's a gorgeous image. It's something that's going to stand the test of time. Um, I would say that... Um, for a lot of fashion brands have gone a little bit more either lifestyle or it's like a free people kind of thing where it's happy, fun, healthy people having fun, enjoying life, or they've gone more like kind of like an urban fashion, dramatic kind of over the top kind of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, and you can see that in like a Balenciaga, you know, and of course they had their controversy and stuff that created all this drama. Um, but a lot of brands have kind of gone to that gritty kind of look and stuff like that. Um, and that's great and all, but the thing is, is, is that going to be hot two years from now? You know, so I'm always trying to look ahead. I would say you're always the safest, best bet is to create images that are iconic and that are going to stand the test of time. You know, for instance, the fashion images, and by the way, this is styled by a Vogue fashion stylist who styled everything from Vogue, um, you know, and we had this amazing wardrobe uh, at the New York workshop, which was um, following fashion week this year. So we just shot it a few months ago. Um, you know, this is stuff that's very in fashion. It's something that's going to be um, uh, it's going to, I would say it's, it, we created iconic images, images that are going to stand the test of time, the wardrobe, the posing, the model, um, the background shooting at a $40 million mansion, this kind of stuff I think would be really strong. Um, and shooting with Louis Vuitton, it will stay on the test of time, right? So if you can create images that I would say are iconic, it will make a big difference. Icon is everything. And when I mean iconic, it's like, think of images from Irving Penn or think of images from Annie Leibovitz or Mario Testino or Petra de Machelier, um, you know, all these incredible great photographers that have created iconic images, Richard Avedon, uh, you know, iconic images over the years and what their images look like and how are they iconic? They're powerful. They can stand alone meaning like they don't need a whole story to guide them, you know, gauge them together. For instance, those images I was just reviewing on those other photographers' websites, they might have one good image, but then they can't stand alone, right? Um, I'll show you an example. We just did our, um, 
our uh, elite masterclass in October. Um, and this was from the prior year at, at our elite masterclass. But this is something that's photographed by one of our attendees um, that uh, named Hans that was shot on location at our elite masterclass. This is an iconic image. This pose, the art direction, the storytelling, this film noir kind of feel, this will be in years to come. This image is iconic. It's stunning. The pose totally works. The nuance of the faces, the movement of the arms, the movement of the feet, the location, the dress, everything about this is iconic. And this is an image that is not going to go out of date. So to my, my uh, guidance for you getting in is to shoot content like this. This will stand the test of time and create something that whether you, you, you can book shoots right now and you can book shoots three years from now with an image like this. So I am also looking at Evergreen because the cost of these productions is so high. I want to make sure that the images are not going to go obsolete in a couple of years. And if you're too much on the current trends, they can go obsolete too quickly. So you have to be very careful of that. Um, so I would say the future of fashion, though, is definitely going to motion. I've been showing a lot of video. I've been talking about motion a lot. And I would say that the future of fashion and photography is basically video. Okay, it's creating video content. So make sure that at every shoot you're doing, you're shooting video too. Because this is what clients are all looking for. They are all looking for video right now. This is absolutely key. Whether you're doing fashion, whether you're doing lifestyle, this is something that is key and critical. And it's something that um, I want to make sure that you guys have a epic video reel and not just a photographic body of work. You've got to have a reel if you want to be successful as a photographer. So for instance, my reel, this is my production company, Indigo Productions. There will be good times and epic adrenaline filled challenges. Where it's you can recognize some of these shoots. So it's a combination of my high-end video content from my fashion shoots, from our photographic workshops, as you can see here, as well as commercial campaigns, as well as my television shows, as well as commercials I've shot with celebrities. So it's got a mix put together in my video reel. This is going to be essentially the future, whether you're developing a fashion reel, a lifestyle reel, or a general overall reel, which this is, um, this is something that is the solution to land big opportunities. Um, this is actually, this specific video is what landed me two Burberry campaigns this year. Even though it's not all fashion, but it shows a variance and it's so high level that it really got uh, them interested to book me and then book me again. So this is what I would recommend you guys all do is develop a world-class video reel. And it just so happens that every single one of our in-person photographic five-day workshops, as well as a six-day workshop at my castle, we will shoot with you. You have the opportunity to film with high-end 8K video cameras on gimbals, which are motion stabilizers, as well as drones and even underwater cameras permitting, we have the opportunity to give you the greatest video content and photographic content you've ever shot in your entire lifetime. So super excited, guys. Um, and this gives you guys an opportunity to, and you can see some of the poses and the art direction and all of this. This is awesome. And by the way, uh, Danielle um, uh, Nowak asks, where is said castle? Great question. My castle is in Massiel en Cambrai. Um, in France, it's in central France. It's just a few hours, about three hours from Paris. It's about three hours from Switzerland. And it's about three, four, three and a half, four hours from Italy. Um, so it's very centrally located. So I often go to the Alps when I'm there, um, driving over to Switzerland, or um, I can go down to Italy or go uh, to Paris. Um, but my castle is a incredible experience. And if you're interested in attending that experience, let us know. We'd love to get you involved. It's an experience of a lifetime, Danielle. And um, it's something that will completely take your photography to the next level. We're going to be doing four or massive scale shoot days. We're going to be shooting with massive costume fashion uh, apparel where um, it's going to be, think about um, uh, apparel from like um, the Baroque and the Renaissance era, uh, as well as carrot. Uh, we're bringing in a carriage with um, uh, with incredible Frisian horses. We're going to be shooting on my 12 acre a state um, that's uh, built atop a 2000 year old Roman palace. And um, there's still Roman remnants um, and all kinds of Roman artifacts. In fact, we even found the sarcophagus of the general Marcellus from 2000 years ago um, beneath uh, the ground. It's actually in a museum right now, but it was discovered on my estate. Um, and also um, there's a 4,000 year old um, Celtic uh, stone, a kind of like a, a miniature Stonehenge on the corner as well. So it has incredible uh, location, beautiful uh, um, estate, and um, 49 rooms. So it's a completely ridiculous over-the-top location. And since I own the location, we can literally do anything we want at this location uh, for shooting. So anything you could possibly come up with 
uh, because the location is so ridiculous. And since I own it, um, there's it's unlimited on what we can photograph and film there um, because there are no restrictions since I own it, which is fantastic. Because oftentimes when we're shooting in these amazing locations, there's only so much we can do because uh, it's somebody else's property. But since I own this, we can do whatever we want. Um, but these are some great questions. Um, thank you so much, Danielle. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, uh, Doug Hill asked a really great question. Um, what has been your most successful strategy when reaching out to a cold client, one that you aspire to work with? Is an email, actual call, maybe sending a portfolio? Now, this is very off topic, uh, Doug. It's it's not on topic with um with uh, posing, but uh, I will answer it. Um, the most successful strategies is to create essentially a trifecta approach around the around the client. Okay, so what I would do is instead of just send them an email. That's a lot of photographers do. They just send an email broadcast, or whatever. Well, that's not going to work these days because everybody emails. Um, I would say that that's a maybe a start. You know, I use agency access. I, I just paid for that. It's like a fifteen hundred dollar agency access to be able to. I have the full database of every single decision maker worldwide that hires photographers. I have their direct emails, phone numbers, addresses. Uh, the, of the clients that shoot, you know, if I want to shoot for Versace or Gucci, or I want to shoot with Saatchi and Saatchi, the ad agency, or David and Goliath, whatever, I have all their direct contact information. So I will set up a sophisticated email broadcasting campaign. And I go over this in our photography master marketing workshop that we also offer. This is probably the most popular of every workshop we've ever done, um, is the um, uh, marketing mastery photographic workshop. Um, and this is one that um, also it's $12.95, but it, you can enroll today with a $300 discount. So if you do want to get involved in the marketing workshop, I do recommend this. And I showcase my approach of how I land big opportunities um, at the marketing workshop. So, um, so that is something that I would uh, create a sophisticated campaign towards LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I would, I mean, I show you how to do it in this marketing workshop. I set up email broadcasts regularly, at least once a week. Um, I'm also calling them. Um, I, I, I try to reach out to them at least a couple times a week and try to talk to them at least once every week or every other week. And um, making sure I'm picking up the phone and calling to try to reach out and speak to them personally. I'm personally email following up. And then also, again, LinkedIn messaging is one of my my most valuable things. Um, I used to also send print promos, but these days, since a lot of people are working remotely, the print promos don't always um, get to their homes. So um, print promos, uh, I, I would just suggest doing an e email version of a print promo. Um, okay, so uh, the, the next live workshop, Derek, he asks, where's the next live workshop going to be? The next live workshop is going to be in Newport Beach, which by the way, um, is the what the next topic I wanted to get into. I know we have a lot of information today, but um, the Newport Beach workshop, um, and this is um, a, an incredible experience where we are shooting on location at multi-million dollar mansions in Newport Beach with top models, top lifestyle models, then they are bringing it. They are bringing the energy. And of course, I have a lot of energy, but when I'm on set, I'm even bigger energy. So I am, I'm pounding Red Bulls, I'm bouncing up and down, I'm jumping, I'm coaching the models, and I am posing them, okay? Because when you're shooting lifestyle, you don't want them to just pose and capture a shot. I want them to move and have energy and excitement and fun. I want to have interaction. I want to have, create stories. I want to have moments in time. That's what I'm creating. So the next workshop is Newport Beach. It's been sold out, but there is one spot uh, that we can squeeze the photographer in if they do want to join that. So Derek, if you want to come to that, um, or Danielle, if you want to come to that, if you guys want to join that experience, there is one spot I, we can squeeze the photographer into. Um, and I would be honored to have you um, come to this experience. This is probably one of our most popular workshops we do of the year. It's one of my absolute favorite because it's lifestyle photography. I know we've talked a lot about fashion in this webinar, but lifestyle photography is my favorite thing. And it's the most lucrative aspect of photography. Lifestyle photography is where you land the hundred thousand to $200,000 campaigns. Okay. This is where the money is. Happy, healthy people having fun, enjoying life sequences like this. And by the way, posing a scene like these, I'm gonna go back to this one. This is challenging to pose. She's, I had to literally run with the models. They're running, going back and forth, back and forth. We're in a strawberry field. We're coaching them into it. Now, luckily, these are top models. Um, these are unbelievable top models, especially Hannah uh, Danley, the one on the right. She's got this big energy, this big smile, and she can just work it. I literally, it's almost like I push a button and she's jumping up and down, smiling and giving it to me. And she can do this for 10 hours straight. 
for days upon end. She can do this and doesn't break a sweat. She's an absolute beast, right? Um, and then this amazing male model that's bringing to me looking natural and energized. But a scene like this, this could be across the board. This could be a scene for a free people campaign. So it's like a fashion lifestyle, or it could be a scene for like a health insurance or a health, a pharmaceutical drug, or, um, you know, they're having fun. It could be like a farm to table thing. It could be agriculture. Or it could be health, wellness. Um, it could be personal care. It could be a million different aspects. This is a critical and amazing way uh, to um, photograph something like this. I love this, but it's coaching them into that moment. And then it's creating all this energy. This is a really challenging one. Four models, one female. And by the way, this is Hannah again, but with three child models and all three child models were very, very difficult to work with. I don't know why, but they just were not in it this day. And I had to coach the heck out of these models, these little kids. And luckily, Using the strategy I, I talked about before, you have your primary model like Hannah basically make the scene happen. Because if it was just the kids and some average fashion model or something, nothing would happen. But Hannah worked it. She started picking up the girl, spinning her around. The girl would not smile. So Hannah is spinning her around, making her smile. We've got the little boy that picks up her his little sister um, in the foreground there. Little sister was just you know, upset and crying and not happy. So the little brother picks her up and spins her around and runs around with her and it really got her going. And I love this. Very, very complicated. But again, we're art directing a scene, we're allowing it to unfold and then capturing it. Now the lightning is beautiful too, because I'm using a giant eight by eight foot bounce, but it's it's kind of secondary here. I'm more concerned with their poses, right? I, I really am interested in their poses. That's really, really important. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. These are some really, uh, oh, and, and here's like a video version of that to give you guys an idea of what it, what it actually felt like to be there on set. The video, you see the movement, the action going down. And, and, and I love the posing here, the smiles, the energy, the feeling, um, you know, what's going on uh, with the models. And I'm just looking at the nuances here. Okay. Now this is just raw video. I didn't even adjust this video. These just clips put together. Um, but I wanted to show you this. Um, and then of course, this would be some great content. They're a little far, far away here. So I probably wouldn't photograph them this far away. As they get closer, boom, there's probably a moment in there, but then it's too close. And then she's like this kind of, she's figuring out what to do. I'm coaching her. She isn't really posing just yet. It's just small mo. She's getting ready. Okay. She's getting the smile going. We're getting ready to, you know, I'm coaching her and guiding her along the way here. Okay. And then, you know, we got that moment. We're going to flip to the male model. He's looking off into the other direction, pulling the horse around. He's not looking directly into camera. And then, of course, this is a video, so it's from the side. Um, but it's creating these um, sequences, the photographer's on camera right. And then also photographing him leading the horse into the distance is awesome. Um, photographing the model on the horse. This is challenging because when you're posing a model on the horse, you have to have somebody that's super comfortable being on a horse. Not all models are, but also being at the right angle and the right height is a challenge as well. Or something like this where the models are moving in, they're running in, they're jumping, they're smiling, and you only get a split second of the right moment. But as you can see, the photographer photographing this, and we're going to capture just the right scene. And then Hannah does some cool stuff the way she, uh, on the camera left there, where she's eating the strawberry. And then she kind of like starts cocking her head in a little bit and starts moving. And it's just super fun. So she does all kinds of like enjoyment moments. This is some interaction with the food or with products and stuff like that. I love stuff like this, right? But this kind of gives you some slow-mo version of a multi-model situation, um, which is very challenging. It's a not an easy situation to photograph or film, um, but to get just those right moments. And of course, I'm shooting at about 16 frames a second um, to make sure that I'm getting as many shots and versions when the models are in the right pose. Love this. Okay, so Hannah, she's cocking her head right there. I love this. I think this is the shot that I ended up using with the photographic version of this. Um, and I'm slightly from camera right at this point. And then, and then also from camera left, another angle would be really nice here too. But if you can just see the little nuances make a huge difference. Love something like this, the girl back with the horse, and you can see the way she's holding the reins, very natural, very real. You notice the theme here with posing? It's all about natural and real. That's what I'm going for. It's all about natural and real. I absolutely love this. Okay, uh, another few good questions I want to answer while this video is playing. Alan uh, Title asks, how do you deal with wardrobe sizes? Uh, sizes for a shoot and style. 
Um, okay, so Alan, what I love to do with wardrobe is, of course, I'm casting top models. So top models are all size zero or two. So I'm always going to um, uh, have wardrobe that's essentially zero or two. Um, and, and then I'm also, it's usually not even tight enough. So oftentimes I'm clamping it as well. So even double zero would be great. So I'm, when I'm, uh, and in addition to what my wardrobe stylist pulls, so for instance, in Newport Beach, I'm going to have a professional wardrobe stylist there. They're going to pull all this amazing wardrobe from showrooms as well as from um, brands. In addition, though, I'm going to buy, personally buy about $30,000 of wardrobe. And I'm going to use that for the shoot. And then I'm going to return it. And um, so, and, and I'm going to do that because, you know, the wardrobe stylist, I, I, I'm, I'm confident that they're going to pull it off, but I want to have more options. And this is what I'd recommend. Always have a high credit limit on your credit cards. You can buy and return wardrobe. It doesn't cost me anything. I just put $30,000 of the wardrobe on it from either department stores or I'm buying from free people or I'm buying from urban outfitters or whatever. Um, and I buy all this wardrobe, have it shipped to me, size zero. Um, and then I um, bring it on set and then the wardrobe stylist opens it all up, steams it, incorporates it into what they pulled and then dresses the models with it. And then at the end of the shoot, we, um, of course, uh, keep track of, you know, what each outfit the models are wearing so that we can publish it and submit it to magazines. And then after that, um, we uh, put all the wardrobe, pack it all up, mail it back. And I recommend not doing it in person. It's better to do it online because you're not going to have um, issues with returns online. They're just sending it back to a warehouse they'll give you a full return. If you're bringing it in store, it's going to be a lot more challenging. Okay. So um, yeah, so definitely be aware of that. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, this is uh, some really fantastic questions. I really love this. Um, and also um, uh, you guys are uh, writing in some um, great websites and stuff like that. I love this. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So uh also from Travis, um, I uh, great to hear from Travis. Um, he's saying, um, uh, it would be my pleasure to spread the word and don't know. Um, let's see, he says, there's zero doubt in attending any of these workshops is a game changer and, and of any level and caliber photographer up to the next level. Would love to chat offline um, on one of these days and attend one uh, or two or three. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Travis, because most of our photographers, uh, I would say the average photographer that attends our workshops takes at least three at least three. Um, most photographers uh, are, are always, I mean, it's 95% re-enrollment rate because they come to the production. They're so epic. Um, and they're like, oh my gosh, where could I bring? If I was to produce something like this on my own, where am I going to find alpacas? Where am I going to shoot a multi-million dollar location? Multiple models, top models, wardrobe like this. Where am I going to, how am I even going to figure that out? Complicated, right? And these kind of productions are so epic and over the top <laughs> to make all of this happen. This is a challenge. And this is something where um, we bring it all to the table. This is something where we create these scenes, allow them to unfold, and then you get to capture them and photograph them and create the greatest scenes you've ever shot in your lifetime for lifestyle, for fashion, for swim, for beauty, and to take it to the highest echelon. And by the way, this one, I love this one. This one was just shot at our most recent Newport workshop. We did a whole roller skate scene. And by the way, this was challenging because these models couldn't roller skate. So I'm like asking him to do something. They can't even roller skate. So we just had them stand there and photograph them. And one of them is standing with one foot on the ground and the other skate in the air. And the other girl's just trying to like keep herself st steady. But it ended up being a great moment. Shot this in the rice fields with, um, or the, um, sorry, the bamboo fields with alpacas. Amazing. Shot at a multi-million dollar mansion with um, two little Pomeranians, my, my two Pomeranians, actually. <laughs> uh, but you notice the wardrobe styling here is next level. And the wardrobe details here, um, and you know, you guys asked about that, like, Alan, these are really, really important to get the wardrobe just right, because that will take you to the next level. Okay, um, so uh, Alan also asked, do you book lifestyle for a client or do you build a book of stock? Absolutely, I don't do stock photography, Alan. Stock photography was dead 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Okay, stock photography, you're never going to make money on. Um, you know, all like iStock and Getty Images, they've kind of ruined that for photographers. So to make real money, you need to shoot custom scenes, um, art directing the scenes and shooting it as a campaign. Um, I don't do any stock photography whatsoever. I shoot everything as a custom shoot for clients. Always, always, always. Um, and also with um, high-end video as well. 
Um, also, we bring in a lot of celebrity models. This is CJ Franco. She's in one of the latest um, Netflix specials. Um, she's uh, the the uh, like the host of one of their new TV shows. Um, she's a major um, a celebrity now and top model. Uh, we use big time top models, whether they're in, from Vogue or whether they've been in Sports Illustrated, whether they're celebrities. Um, we have the creme de la creme that we bring on set. Um, sequences like this. This is one of my favorite poses, something like this, where it's creating a moment, allowing it to unfold, and then capturing it, creating these insane moments in energy and feeling, the expressions, the energy, the moment of, of them boxing and wrestling in the bed. It's so fun. And I love this because it's so ridiculous, but I'm creating and posing some concept of what some young people could do. Right. And this could be used for all kinds of things. I mean, it could be used for a housewares brand. You know, I could totally see this in like Target for like a Target campaign for their housewares. So beautiful because all these multi million dollar houses we use for our locations, for our workshops, they're generally staged. So they're perfectly staged. So everything looks perfect. So it just looks like, you know, just like you'd use in a, you know, for a housewares campaign. Um, you know, it, it's absolutely perfect. Some, something like that. You know, or if it's a moment, a couple interacting, having a moment, creating these scenes uh, or sequence with um, where I bring in a lot of vehicles. So like in like a 1960s um, VW bus and creating these. Uh, this is a really interesting art direction because you don't always have to have poses where the model's looking into camera. This one is a great example of the model swooping her hair. And so it looks really real. It looks almost like I'm a voyeur looking into the scene. And by the way, all these fit photographs I'm showing you, they're all shot by different photographers at our workshops that I'm art directing and posing, but they're all photographed by different photographers. So you're getting different perspectives. Um, but then you've got the, the, the couple that's interacting, having fun in the background. You've got the, the model that's, you know, uh, the second one in from camera left, who's got this smile, gorgeous model, giving a great expression and energy. If you've got the palm trees in the distance, it's a perfect image, incredible art direction. This was also shot at the most Newport, most uh, recent Newport workshop. Great example of models moving towards camera, capturing with solar flare. <laughs> Good use of, of animals here with the, the little Pomeranians holding them up. Um, and then love something like this. Just having fun. Just having fun. Just shooting in somebody. It's an entryway to a home, but just having the girls having fun, enjoying life. And I'm, I also get their feet in it. They're even like doing a little bit of shuffle dancing and just live it, living it up. I put music on, I get them posing and then get them into that moment. That's what it's all about, guys. Love, 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 love this. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, and oh, and Alan's just mentioning something about um, uh, models uh, being really skinny. And yeah, absolutely. Um, that's generally because they are making the outfits look as good as possible. This is what fashion brands tend to go for. Um, and this is going to stand the test of time. I don't care if it's now, 10 years from now, this will still be in style. It will still work. Brands are still going to want you. They're still going to hire you. Um, so I, uh, I, I personally would go down this route as well. Okay, uh, these are all absolutely incredible questions. Um, uh, and I just, oh, this is another last one I did want to, you know, showcase with poses like this, where you're creating almost like the models posing for the other model. So she's got this old school video camera. So you notice I'm doing a lot of storytelling in my posing. And I love to create these stories and create these moments, get them energized and excited, and then get them moving and having fun with each other. I love this. This is at the most recent Newport Beach workshop. So these are incredible experiences. Um, absolutely love these. And um, these are some in incredible, incredible productions. Um, and uh, okay. Um, yeah. And Gideon Heller asks, have you ever filmed the live workshops and sold the recordings? We actually haven't. We, we don't do that just because it's too distracting. Um, we're filming during the workshops, but the workshops are so incredible and over the top that I want to give my absolute full attention to the photographers attending rather than just a video recording of the experience. I want you to have the experience. And you notice the photography workshop series, it's not called the Kevin Michael Schmitz workshop because I don't want it to be about me. It's about you. And the most important thing to me is that you create the greatest photographs and video content of your lifetime and that it's you that's going to benefit from this. Your photographic career, you can double, triple, quadruple how much you're charging for your photo shoots. You can build your 
credibility by having top models in your portfolio. You can take it to the next level and get published in major magazines. Every single workshop we've ever directed has been published in nationally or internationally published magazines. Um, you can win awards and, and win photographic awards where you know we've literally won 107 photographic awards in one year. Um, and this year we're rolling in with even more awards. So we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of awards that we can boast. I can't even keep track of them anymore because we win so many photographic awards and you can create content. I do this for my photographers because I want you to create the greatest images you've ever shot in your lifetime that are iconic, that stand the test of time, perfectly posed, perfectly art directed, incredible production, world-class top models, and they're going to take you to the next level so you can compete with the best photographers in the world. And if you're interested in um, seeing uh, Doug, for instance, you may ask, um, is there a place I can see all of your workshops and dates? It's in the chat, but it's photographyworkshopseries.com has everything listed and it's the most valuable resource. We have so many cool things on there, including um, example business strategy plan, which I didn't even mention, but it's something that um, I recommend all photographers develop. Um, I did it on my, um, I think we talked about it on the last webinar, um, but we have an example of a 2023 photographic business strategy plan listed right here. I recommend you guys literally lift this off of our website, steal it from our website, please do. Feel free to steal all this stuff, I don't care, um, and make it your own. So I'll just copy and paste this and then adapt it to yourself. This is an example of one for a photographer to make $300,000 a year, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and these are all the goals and actions that they're going to do each quarter. Okay. So um, if you go through our website, there's all this juicy stuff as well as all of the workshop dates from Newport Beach in February, Las Vegas in March, Miami Beach on Swim and Lifestyle in April, the equestrian lifestyle shoot that Adriana attended in May. Um, that's in Virginia. We have the uh, Chicago Vintage Fashion and Lifestyle that's um, in Chicago in June. We then are fly to the castle. I'll be at my French castle all summer long. And um, we'll be there essentially July, August, and September. Uh, and we're going to be doing an epic fashion workshop in September 3rd through 8th at my French castle with supermodels from Milan and Paris. And then we fly back and then direct a workshop in New York at the end of September and then our elite masterclass in October. So if you guys are interested in any of those experiences, let us know and also set up a one-on-one -on -one photographic strategy session to go over your images. And also if you want to... Um, Talk to any of our photographic uh, consultants about um, uh, setting up a, uh, you know, essentially, um, uh, if you guys want to enroll in a workshop, let them know. Um, but this is something that um, if you guys haven't done that already, uh, please do, because we are, um, you know, very, very interested in getting you guys to the next level and creating content where you will shoot the greatest images you've ever shot in your lifetime. Um, and you will take it to the highest echelon of what you can create. And this is what it's all about. And also all the art direction and storytelling is extremely valuable and important for us because I want to make sure that you guys achieve that at the highest level. All right, guys. Um, well, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think we had um, maybe about 350 photographers live in total that have joined us today live. Plus we're going to have several thousand in rebroadcast. Um, and uh, if you are watching this rebroadcast, make sure to also set up a one-on-one -on -one photographic strategy session. We'll put the link in the YouTube channel and also watch all of our epic other photographic webinars that are totally free. Um, we have a library of over 70 that are absolutely incredible. And um, I fly to the Maldives tonight and I'm going to be broadcasting live from the Maldives um, uh, coming up. And we're going to do another epic webinar and we will reveal some secret strategies of filming um, in, and photographing on location in the Maldives at an ultra luxury five star, I would even say seven star luxury resort at the highest level and be able to achieve high end resort um, content like we're showing today. Thank you so much, guys. Make sure to, to uh, utilize nuance in your poses. Make sure it's all about art direction. Don't always have the models looking into camera and create something where it has a sense of intrigue when you're shooting fashion or swim. Um, and when you're shooting lifestyle, I just want energy and fun. That's what it's all about. Take care, guys, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.